good costumes. Oh, Marvin, look at the costumes. All those sweet candies would rot your teeth. Have some sugar-free candies instead. Take as many as you'd like. It's candy time, and with so many people looking for low carb and keto options, I thought this Halloween we'd go sugar free on the channel. But don't worry, it does not have to be scary or disgusting. I have done homemade cleaner candies on the channel many times, but never low carb. The good thing about low carb candy is that it is lower in carbs and sugar, but the bad news is that it's easy to feel inclined to keep eating. So, which candy should we make first? Man, sugar free candy is the worst. Yeah, it tastes terrible. I wish I had a delicious almond joy instead. For my low carb almond joy, I start by combining unsweetened coconut, low carb sugar free maple syrup or liquid sweetener of choice. I have linked this one in the description. Coconut oil, full fat coconut milk, vanilla extract, and a pinch of salt in the food processor. Blend together and then press the mixture down either into sprayed molds or a loaf pan. I have done pans in the past, but this mold made it so much easier. It's also linked in the description. Then press the almonds down so that they hold on top. I used a little dab of that sweetener to hold as glue and freeze until set. In the meantime, melt some sugar-free or low-carb chocolate chips in the microwave or using the double boiler over the stove. I find it depends on the brand of chocolate, but if it isn't getting smooth enough, you can always add a teaspoon or two of coconut oil. When the coconut bars are frozen, remove them. These molds make it so easy to pop them right out. Then we can coat. First, I dipped the bottoms in chocolate and placed them onto a sprayed baking rack. Here, I can pour the chocolate on top, letting gravity help me coat the rest. If you wanted them even lower in carbs, but still delicious, I like to drizzle them with chocolate rather than coat completely, they look so pretty and you get the flavor of the chocolate without it needing to be quite as coated. Either way, let them set in the fridge or freezer. I prefer to keep them in the freezer and then thaw them out as I'd like to eat them. Wow, I have done almond joys in the past, but I think this recipe is now perfected and the molds made it so much easier. They are absolutely delicious, a sweet bite, but still enough salt to balance the flavor. And it's just amazing that the ingredients are so much cleaner. You guys, check this out! <gasps> no way! Where'd you get that? That gross sugar-free candy just transformed into a delicious Almond Joy! Oh, man! <laughs> I wish all these gross sugar-free candies would transform into Reese's Cups. For low-carb Reese's, start by melting low-carb or sugar-free chocolate of choice and fill the bottom of the molds to coat. It will depend on your mold and how big you want them to be, but I try to coat the chocolate about halfway up the molds. I found this easiest to do with the back of a spoon or a popsicle stick. Freeze for about 10 minutes. In the meantime, make the filling. Melt peanut butter and coconut oil together in the microwave or on the stove. Make sure that the peanut butter has no added sugar to keep it low carb. You can also use almond butter if preferred or sunflower butter if needed. Stir in your sugar-free powdered sweetener and salt, seasoning to taste. Spoon a teaspoon of the mixture, depending on the size of your mold, into the center of the chocolate cup. Freeze to set, and in the meantime, you can melt the rest of your chocolate for the top layer. Add the chocolate to cover the frozen peanut butter cup and freeze for another 15 to 20 minutes to finish it off. These are probably the easiest of the day, but they might be the most impressive looking. The powdered sugar in that peanut butter mixture gives it a texture that's just like the inside of a Reese's. You know how it's a little bit thicker and better than regular peanut butter? Sort of pasty or chalky, but in a good way? If you're a Reese's fan, you know what I mean. And I promise this does not disappoint. You guys, look! It's a Halloween miracle! Oh, whoa! Oh, snap, P, you guys are so lucky! I want some peanut M&M's. Low carb peanut M&M's are last. This was a toughie to figure out and it's sort of a cheat, but delicious nonetheless. I start by melting low carb appropriate chocolate however you'd like. Stir in shelled peanuts and I also used macadamia nuts. What a fun way to keep them low carb because macadamia nuts are higher in fat and lower in carbs. You could really use any nuts. 
tossed a coat, I prefer using salted nuts, by the way. Use a fork to fish out the nuts and let the excess chocolate drip off before adding to a parchment lined baking sheet to set. Try to get the peanuts separated as best you can. It's a bit meticulous, but the fun of M&Ms is eating them individually, not as a cluster or bar. It is that easy. And into the fridge they go to set. Wait, that's it? Yes, okay, so they're chocolate covered nuts, but they will satisfy the craving just the same. And I think that they should actually make macadamia M&Ms after trying these because they were seriously so perfect and salty sweet. And I love that I don't need to consume any of that food dye to enjoy these. Almond Joys are so good. Halloween rocks! All of these candies will need to be stored in the freezer or fridge as they will melt on their own. I've included these recipes in my holiday ebook that I released last year. I've also made these three pages of the ebook available to you for free. So whether you've already bought the book or if you just want these recipes only, you can get them using the link in the description. Get the whole holiday ebook or any ebook of your choice for 10% off the rest of this month using the code Halloween at checkout. Thanks for being here. Have a happy Halloween month and remember, it's all a matter of mind over munch. Ah! <laughs>